So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, create UDF in customer maintenance. And we're going to open up customer maintenance in mass, ABC company. Notice that we have a couple of fields here, our sort fields, customer type fields. We use this to, um, uh, we have clients plug in their um, uh, region or department. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a UDF specifically for region. And we're going to do a couple of things to it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to custom off. We're going to go to user defined field and table maintenance. I'm going to go down to my AR customer table. And I'm going to create a UDF. I'm going to call the UDF region. And we're going to start off with four regions. We're going to make this easy. We're going to make a north region, a south region, an east, and a west region. So I have a couple options here. I can make it a list box. I can make an open entry, a multi-line. I'm actually going to choose a drop box. That's going to give our users the ability to uh, pick from a list. I'm going to make length of this UDF 10. That's going to be important. I'll show you how it's important later on. And on my second tab, I'm going to uh, validate, which is essentially the same as creating my pick list. So I'm going to type in with south, east, and west. And I hit OK. And I hit OK. I've now created a field called region that was in my customer master table. So now I can go in customer maintenance and essentially add that field. And I'm going to go ahead and add in this open area. So to do so, I can right click on the panel thing. Hit Customizer. I'm going to create it for all company and all users. And I'm going to add it in this nice open area here. Since it's a, a drop box or a pick list, I'm going to give it enough size where I can see all four. And there's the UDF we just created. And we'll get this closed. And so now you'll see that we've added a relatively simple UDF called region. There is up in the additional tab. It's a pick list. Okay, so I can choose from north, south, east, west. In this case, I'm going to choose north, and I'm good. Now, choosing from a, a pick list uh, such as this one. Um, is really nice and easy if uh, the uh, items on the pick list are static. So we have here north, south, east, or west. Now what happens when we introduce two new regions into the mix? Let's say central and coastal. Well, using uh, this methodology, we would first need to go back into the UDF. So we're going to go back into Cutter Master. We're going to find the region UDF. And we can certainly come in here and type in central and coastal. And we're going to save our UDF. And we're going to go back into customer maintenance. And we're going to do those changes take place. So now we have north, south, east, west, central, and coastal. So you can see that um, when we have to make changes to a pick list, um, while we can do it uh, going back in custom office and uh, UDF maintenance, um, really isn't the ideal way to have a dynamic pick list. I'm going to show you a way uh, where we can use a pick list similar to anywhere in mass where you have a magnifying glass, where a magnifying glass actually pulls from a different table, and that table can be 
uh, essentially uh, maintained uh, by the user without having to go into um, UDF maintenance to do so. So we're going to create another uh, UDF called region, and we're going to create a somewhat dynamic uh, list. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to remove our existing UDF. I'll just kind of give it a And we're going to update our table. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back in um, and we're going to uh, create a UDF uh, called region again. And this time, I'm not going to make it a Dropbox. I'm going to make it a multi-line. Okay? I'm going to keep all the other attributes the same. We're going to keep it at uh, 10 cars. I'm not going to do anything to my validation. So we're creating a relatively simple UDF called region. But I don't, I... So we've created a UDF in Customer Master called region. We're now going to create another table that can be maintained. And we can do that uh, by creating um, what's called a user-defined table in mass. And I'll show you how to do that now. We're going to go into the module that we're impacting. In this case, AR Customer Master is an AR module. When we select our AR module, you're going to see an icon, Illuminate, here that says Add a User-Defined Table. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to call my table region. And I'm going to tab through. And it's going to create a field for me called region code, which is okay. And the field length is going to be 10. As I said before, that 10 is going to be important in it. We've created a table in mass called a region table. In that region table, we have a region code that has a length of 10. In the table, I'm also going to create a field called region description. And I make this a bit bigger. Make it 30 characters. So I now have a new table that I'm going to create a pick list from. Now I've created a table called AR region. It sits in the AR module. Now to access this table, you're going to come over to the right-hand side, and you're going to find the icon that says Add UDT to Desktop. What this is going to do now is if we close out, we've added in custom office in UDT maintenance a table called AR region. Now, if I try to look at this for the first time, it says I'm not authorized to access the program. We actually have to grant access to this section. So I'm going to go into role maintenance. And I'm going to find my user. And I'm going to go to the custom office section. And there's a new entry there called AR region UDT, the user defined table we just created. And I'm going to select it. And now I can access that table. Now keep in mind, when we create user-defined tables such as these, they will reside in the custom office area. Um, it would be nice if we can move this up to AR or if we were using this in AP, uh, but they will have to reside in a in area. Now we have a table that we start popping, typing in my regions. 
going to make this North Region. Oops. South Region. East Region. And West Region. And we have our Central. region and our coastal region. So you can see that we actually have a bowl that we can start um, uh, maintaining without having to dig deep into custom office. And now we're going to be able to use this table as a pick list for our UDF. So we're going to go back to the UDF. We're going to go to the user defined field and table maintenance. We're going to go back to customer master. We're going to find our UDF called region. Now you remember I said this field length of 10 is important because whenever we have a field that's 10 characters, we can actually go to our validation tab and it's going to find any user defined table where that field um, has the same length. So in this case, when I created my user defined table for region, I made the region code 10. Mass sees that it matches a field length. So it's actually available for a pick. If I were to create a region code 12 characters, while my UDF is 10 characters, I won't even see this. It won't be available. Now that it's available, I could say whenever I'm populating this field, go ahead and use the values that are in the region table. Okay? So I hit OK. I hit OK here. I'm part of the way there. Now I can go into Cusp Office and I can add that field back in. I'm going to add it in the same area here. I'm going to customizer. I'm going to find JD Edwards and my dot. And in this case, I don't necessarily need to make it large. I can make it just one, um, one row. I'm going to find my UDF. I'm going to hit select. You're going to notice now that uh, it's got a magnifying glass. So now when I go back into customer maintenance, I have my region code. And I can select any of these, and I'm set. So you can see how this is uh, definitely um, better to manage um, if you're going to be giving users the ability to select uh, from multiple options. Um, we're going to do the same thing, for like a sort field or customer type field. Um, you know, sometimes you necessarily want your users to um, uh, have a, an open field to enter because, you know, in this case, America could be A-M-E-R, it could be A-M-R, uh, somebody else can type in, you know, with an I. So it can get them to use a pick list. Um, it'll certainly help you for reporting. And creating a user-defined table will allow you to manage this pick list um, probably in much better fashion than having to go into uh, user defined field and simply add it there. Now, as I said, we created a uh, user defined table for a UDF. Well, we can actually do the same thing for any existing field in math. So let's take um, this customer type. If we scroll through our list, we're going to see that we have some A1, we have some A2s, and we have some A3s. And you may not know what an A1, A2, or A3 customer type is. But great if, as a user, um, you can have that information populated here. 
Well, we can do the same thing as what we did here. We have a region code, a region description. We're going to first create a user-defined table, and then we're going to tie an existing ask field to that user-defined table. So let's first create our user-defined table. We're going to go back into custom list and domain, user-defined field and table maintenance. We're going to highlight our AR module. We're going to add a user-defined table. We're going to call this customer type. Now the customer type field in message four. So I'm going to change this to four characters. And I'm going to add another field. We'll call this customer type description. And we're going to make this um, 20 characters. And we're set. And again, we've created the table. I'm going to add this table to my desktop. There it is. Now before I access it, I'm going to need to grant myself security to do so. And there we go. Let's populate A1, which is going to be my tier 1 customer. A2, a tier 2 customer, and finally A3 is a tier 3 customer. We're going to hit accept. Now this is just slightly different um, than the UDF we created because again we're going to be hitting a field that already exists in math. Okay. So we're going to go back into the customer master table. Now I can double click. And if I were to go to edit fields, you're going to see that it's going to take me back to the area to create UDFs. Well, I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to go to an existing field in mass. So when I double click my customer master table, I'm going to go to advanced field settings. I'm going to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to be able to select from any of the fields in that table. In this case, I'm going to find my customer type field. You're going to see that uh, I have the ability to validate, again, since the um, length of the field was 4, and the field that I created, customer type is 4. I can select a UDT underscore customer type table. And I can hit OK. And now, let me go into uh, customer maintenance. I now see that a field um, that was already there now is no longer an open field, but a field that I can select from a paste. Okay. If I wanted to take that one step further, actually let's go back in here into customer maintenance. And we're going to go to customizer. And we're going to add one extra field in here. 
Now if I go into Customizer and I go into um, our field selection, if I scroll down, I'm actually going to find table that I uh, created, the customer type table, and I'm going to find the customer type description, and I'm going to hit select. Oops, oops, oops. Get this here. We're going to move this just a bit. Let's get rid of that. Now what we've done and I should have moved it ever so slightly to the right. Um, but essentially what you're able to do now is uh, give your user the ability to see a better description of what they've entered. If it's A2, if it's A3, um, you're now going to see a description of a Tier 3 customer uh, right next to it. Okay? So a couple of neat things you can do. Um, one is that uh, I need a, a UDF, and two, create a, uh, what's called the UDT, so either user is a more dynamic way of populating their field. And then finally, you can use these UDTs um, to create a dynamic way to affect any mass field. Okay. Well, that was a short, uh, short and quick way to, um, you know, do something which is neat, uh, which yeah. is, is just giving your users the ability to manage um, or, or have a more dynamic field available uh, when creating UDFs. Any questions? Looks like we got one question here in the uh, chat window. Wendy wants to know, how do I add okay. AP lines? How do I add to AP lines? Um, let's see. We're going to be going into, let me see if I am looking at this. And Wendy, I think you're talking about, you're talking about how to add fields to this area. Uh, excellent. Okay. So uh, what you want to do is you want to first be sure that you create the UDF um, in the correct area of mass. So in this case, we're going to be creating a UDF in uh, the AP Invoice History Detail Table. So let's create, um, let's create a, a field called um, Vendor Type. Probably not the best field I can think of, but um, you know, let's create one called Comment Who. So if we go into user defined for the table maintenance, and we go into AP, and we go into AP invoice detail, we're going to create a new field, and we're going to call this comment two. And I'm going to make it, and you can make this as large as you want, I'm going to make this 20 characters. And keep in mind, you can certainly, you know, create a Dropbox like we just created. You create a user-defined table as we created. So everything we just did today is also valid uh, in this section. And we're going to close this. Now, we need to add that field to AP Invoice Entry Detail. So to do that, we're going to go into Customizer. We're going to go in Challenge Table. We're going to go into Invoice Data Entry. And we're going to go into the Lines tab. And here, I'm going to double click my top area. So now, Grid Definition, I'm going to Add. And you'll see that it popped right up with the UDF that we just created. We'll call it Comment 2. We're going to hit OK. 
and we're going to save it. Now, when we come into invoice data entry, and type in a new, oops, a new invoice for a hundred dollars. And when I get to my line tab, and we'll notice that sometimes it adds automatically, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to reset our panel if we find that it doesn't come up. Well, let's close this up here. Try this one more time. Yep. And there we go. We now have our comment field. We now have our comment to field. This is an open field because I created it that way. But you could certainly have it, um, you know, use a pick list or use a, um, a user-defined table to add to it. 